My name is Steve Miller. I'm a math professor at Williams College. This is the second of our lectures on introduction to probability. I'm with both of my TAs today, and it's a pleasure to thank the Journal of Number Theory and the Teachers of Scholars program for support. And if you want to get the other lectures, you can just go to the webpage address over here. So today we're going to talk about permutations. So in the last lecture, we talked about factorials. So what was three factorials? Can you tell me what? And how did you calculate it? Three times, three, times three, times three, times three times two times one. Great. And if you want to do four factorial, that would be? Three times two three times, times one times four. four. Excellent. So if you know three factorial, to get four factorial is not so bad. You just multiply that by four. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different, but pretty similar. We're going to do permutations. So do you know why we denote the function with a P? Um, permutations starts with P. No, the letter P paid me a thousand dollars. Yes, it's because permutation starts with a P. Oh, I thought it was two thousand. No, C paid me two thousand. We'll see that in the next lecture. Oh. So whenever you're doing notation, you want notation that's good that speaks to you. And so here we're using the letter P to, to remind us that this is about permutation. So if you have a calculator, which some people used to have uh, far more frequently than they do now. Too, but it's just on a phone. It's just on a phone. But they often have an NPR key. So the factorial function is great if you're ordering all the objects. NPR all together? Or and you often N say NPR. And sometimes you write it with subscripts for the N and the R. So you write it either way. And so the factorial function is great for ordering N objects. But what if you only want to order some of them? So imagine we have five people and their parents weren't nice like yours and they gave them the boring names of A, B, C, D, and E. I really think that last one should be a G. Well, it makes it, it easier if it makes it easier if they're all in alphabetical order. So how many ways are there to choose two people when order matters? So the first is is maybe the present and the second is vice president. How many ways are there to choose three people when order matters? So I'm gonna pause the video and let you think about this for a moment. Okay, welcome back. So how many ways are there to choose two people from five? Well, there are 20 ways. And why 20? We have five choices for the first position. And then once we've chosen, say we chose C, how many people are left once we choose C? Four. So there's four for the second, but five times four is 20. If we wanted to do three people from the five when order matters, well, how many ways would there be to do that? Well, again, we would still have five choices for the first, say we chose C. And then maybe we chose A for the second one. So now we have three left, B, D, and E for the third. So we'd have five times four times three is 60. So the way we're gonna represent this is we're gonna represent it as five um, P2, which means there are five people and we're looking at how many ways to choose two when order matters. And the second is gonna be five P3. We have five people and we're choosing three when order matters. And so now, what if we wanted to do something a little bit harder? What if we want to choose four people from 11 with order matter? Well, how many would they be for the first person? For the first 11. one? 11 and the second? Nine, nine. nine and eight. So if we want to choose four people from 11, the number of ways to do that, if order matters, is 11 times 10 times nine times eight. And now we're going to learn about one of the greatest things you can do in mathematics, nothing. There's actually two ways to do nothing. How could you do nothing multiplicatively? Multiply by zero. Multiply by one. Multiply by one. Yeah, that's true. Another thing you could do is multiply by one and divide by one. Right, and so that's one over one is a great way of writing one. So is two over two, or yeah. seven over seven, or 12 yeah. over 12. For each or problem, x you need, or x over x, is you need to find what's the good way of writing one. How could you do nothing additively? Add zero. Add zero. So it turns out these are two great things to try to make the math simple and speak to you. When you see 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, does that look a little bit like a factorial? Yeah. Yeah. So is there a way to rewrite this as a ratio of two factorials by multiplying by one in a clever way? So I'm going to pause the video and let you try to think about this. And if we can do this, we're going to get a great way to explain. Hi, right, welcome back. So we had a suggestion that this looks a lot like 11 factorial. And so it'd be wonderful if we could just have a seven factorial here, but we don't. How can we get seven factorial? We can multiply by one in a clever way. And that clever way is going to be 
a seven factorial of a seven factorial. And when we do that, we can put this all in the numerator. We'll get 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. That's just the same as 11 factorial. And so we actually have a nice formula for 11p7. 11p7 is just 11 factorial, I'm sorry, 11p4 is just 11 factorial of a 7 factorial. And so this is the beautiful, nice formula we have. And I can ask more generally, what if we want to choose our people from n? So before we did choosing four people from 11, and we had 11 over seven. How would you write seven in terms of 11 and four? 11 minus four. 11 minus four. So, so the question I'm gonna ask you now is, if instead of having 11 people and choosing four, we have n people and we're choosing r, what do you think the answer would be? So I'm gonna pause the video and give you a chance to choose. Wait, wait. All right, welcome back. And so I had a suggestion for my TAs that it should be n factorial of n minus r factorial. That's what npr should be, the number of ways to choose r people from n when order matters. And this is the thing that's a little bit annoying. Let's just start writing it out. There's n choices for the first person. How many for the second? How many for the third? And what's the last one? Why is it not n minus r? Why is it n minus r minus 1? Well, we start with what? It's n. We can write this as n minus we start, zero. We start with n. We start with n. So we're really subtracting zero, subtracting one. So when we subtract r minus one, that's going to be the r term. It's a little bit annoying, but it then becomes nice because when we multiply by one, you can see this is looking like n factorial. So we multiply by n minus r factorial of n minus r factorial, and we have n factorial over n minus r factorial. And so let's take a look at what these functions look like. So I'm gonna plot NPR for different values of N for different values of R. Here is R equals one, here is R equals two, and here, shocker, is R equals three. So what do these growth rates look like? So I'm gonna pause the video and give you a moment to look at these two ones. All right, welcome back. So my TA said the first one looks like a line, the second one looks like not just a parabola, but half a parabola, it's very specific. And it wasn't clear initially what this one might be, but this way, well, a line is degree one in x, a parabola is degree two in x, so maybe this is a cubic degree three in x. And in fact, that turns out to be the case. So it's linear, quadratic, cubic. And if you did NP4, what do you think that would be? Like a quadratic. A quarter. Yeah. And so can we prove these formulas? And we actually can. What is NP1? It's n factorial divided by n minus one factorial. What's five factorial divided by four factorial? Uh, five. What's 12 factorial divided by 11 factorial? Yeah. What's 2020 factorial divided by 2019 factorial? Yeah. So if you look at this, n factorial divided by n minus one factorial is just n. So in fact, not only is this linear, it's just n. And if you look at the plot, oh, when it's 200, it's 200. When it's 400, it's 400. When it's 600, it's 600. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, brain freeze, yes, it's linear. Now, what about the second one? Uh, let's think about what the second one might be. So now let's look, you know, as we set up NP2. What is five factorial over three factorial? Uh, 20, which is five times four. What's eight factorial over six factorial? Eight times seven is fifty-two. Eight times n factorial of n minus two factorial. The n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two factorials. N minus two factorial cancels, we can just n times n minus one. Well, what happens when you multiply n by n minus one? N times n is what's n times n? N squared. And what's n times negative one? Um, negative one is negative n. So when you do n P2, you get n squared minus n. So it's going to be quadratic. The next one, you would have n factorial of n minus 3 factorial. Do you see it's going to just be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2? Yeah. It's going to be a cubic, and so on and so on. So I will leave that as an exercise for you to look at. So I'm going to end today with an exciting preview of the next lecture. It's kind of hard to see some of those numbers. Yeah, the, these people are going to be surfacing a bit. And they're kind of jumping over. Uh, do you remember what this triangle is called? Yeah. Pascal's triangle.
So we're going to look at combinations. So for a lot of things in life, it doesn't matter the order in which you get them. It just matters what you get. So if you're playing a hand of cards, it doesn't matter the order in which the cards were dealt. It just matters what you have. Or if you have a, a pack of baseball cards, it doesn't matter the order in which you get the cards. It just matters which cards you get. Yeah. And so we will talk about how can you easily count combinations when order doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's going to be related to the factorials. There's going to be just a small little twist. And it turns out these are very useful. And the motivation to try to explain one of the big identities is one of my favorite stories. Does anybody know what story this is? Uh, the, the Sneetches. The Sneetches by? Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. And there are two types of Sneetches. Who knows what two types the are? Star the Star and Belly Sneetches and the Non Star Belly Sneetches. And they will help us understand combinations. So, mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed today's lecture. Have a great day.